listen in and learn from the best in e-commerce. You're listening to e-commerce all-stars with Josh Marsden. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So welcome to e-commerce all-stars. And I've got uh, Carl Schuchert uh, here. And Carl is one of the best out there when it comes to chatbot marketing, if not the best. Um, he has one of the best softwares he that he co-owns uh, called Segmate app that you definitely want to check out. It's one of the best chatbot marketing platforms literally on the planet today uh, that you definitely want to check out. So, And he, you know, Carl has millions of dollars in product launches behind him. So he's got just a wealth of experience and you know, running uh, digital businesses, being able to launch digital products. And I mean, even currently he's getting you know, hundreds to a thousands of leads per day in his businesses. So Carl really knows this stuff. He's known as the shark for a reason. And uh, this is why I decided to uh, invite him on to e-commerce all-stars. So this way he can deliver a lot of value to you, the audience. So, uh, you know, Carl, uh, thanks for being on, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, Josh, I really appreciate that great introduction. That's awesome. Um, yeah, lots of lot, lots of crazy stuff going on in my life right now. Um, you know, I had some pretty good breakthrough years the last few years launching softwares with some very uh, well known marketers and uh, kind of learned under some wings of some greatness and uh, started to implement that greatness into my life as well. And, you know, kind of become proof of that. You can learn stuff from the right people and then implement the things that you know they teach and it actually works and one of the things that happened to me in 2015 and going into 2016 was uh, during the F8 conference this is why I got into chatbots so hmm. something that happened was I was building a CRM actually at the time <clears throat> which is a customer ma uh, relations management software <clears throat> excuse me and uh, and at the time I had some developers uh, that we were building this really crazy app and online app and also phone app for iOS and, and Android. And um, it, was, it was a cool application, um, but our developers at the time, um, I told them, I'm like, hey, there's something going on with Messenger. Like there's, you know, I watch the F8 conferences every year, Zuckerberg's talking about it. He's introducing amazing people to the team. And uh, he started talking about um, how they weren't going to bring commerce to messenger in 2015, but there was some talk about, there was some talk about opening up APIs in, in messenger. Um, because in 2015, there was literally a crisscross between, um, pe more people spending more time in, in the actual chat feature of social media than the actual social media aspect of itself, like Facebook versus like messenger. And if you remember back then, Facebook was starting to push their own app. Like they were literally pushing the messenger app uh, to, to download on your phone, you know, and it, get, it gives them more um, ability to do push notifications and stuff like that. Plus it separates the aspect of the social media part from the actual chat part. Um, because more people were spending time in there, we've seen, you know, we all seen that things were happening. Well, in 2016 was when they actually announced that there was going to be commerce inside of messenger and literally like my hair on my arm just like stuck up the hair on the back of my neck i got the shivers i was already getting into into you know software at the time and my developers were saying carl don't do it like facebook will shut you down they were they kept saying like you know they've been known in the past to shut apps down and all this stuff and obviously even recently we've had a lot of crazy stuff going on because of shared data and stuff like that but um because Facebook was already like that stuff happened in 2014. There was a whole, you know, there was a whole bunch of sharing of data. Um, and Facebook started creating these things called tokens, which basically kind of like protects your data and, and protects you, uh, protects privacy of your data. Like you have to give basically, you have to like click a button that says, yes, it's okay for me to give you my data. Um, but no one really knows that. Like as a developer, you kind of, you kind of seen that happening and, and uh, that's kind of some of the back behind the scenes. But my developers at the time were like, no, don't do it. We'll never do it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, we need to put this into a CRM. Anyways, long story short with that is I ended up dropping that whole idea, like the CRM idea. I was like, you know what? I'm not wow. going to do CRM. How much at did all. you have invested into it, into it up to that point? I had about $50,000 invested into it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we but saw that was smart, though. I mean, you know, I mean, it was smart for you not to be married to that idea. Even sure. with 50,000 on the line. Yeah. A lot of money put on the line. Um, you got to pivot. You got to be agile and be, you got to be able to pivot. You know, you got to be able to read markets before they happen. And in 2000 and 
2015, 2016, I was reading the writing on the wall with messenger and, um, and also Zuckerberg introduced David Marcus, who was the former CEO and of PayPal. Um, and I knew like immediately it was like, yeah, like they're bringing commerce into messenger and they're changing the UI. They're, they're, they're realizing that, um, people prefer to be there because that's where they're talking to their loved ones and their family members and, and all that stuff. And, and I have this like really cool analogy that I think really would paint a picture for everybody. Uh, even people listening, um, is, is what messenger really is. And like the leveraging the power of messenger for their business and why they should be leveraging the power of, the, of this for their business. Just like they have a website, just like why they have email uh, for their business, why they need to start leveraging uh, messenger as well. Um, and it's really this thing called like, I, I actually coined a term called chat economy. I call it the new chat economy. It's, it's literally, it's coming. It's the conversational marketing. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's like this, like, you know, just imagine, use your, like your crazy childhood imagination here, but you know, you, you go, you're invited to a barbecue. Okay. And at this barbecue, there's this road, this brick road in the middle. Okay. And then you, you can imagine there's a big F dude. He's like an F but he's blue and he's flipping burgers and hot dogs and he's at the barbecue and people are coming in in that brick road. Well, that's your newsfeed. Okay. That's like where we always share like the best versions of ourselves. That's where we're always like, you know, showcasing our newborns and family pictures and vacations. And if you're, if you're like me and you follow a lot of entrepreneurs, you're seeing a lot of lifestyle photos and stuff, but you know, like cars and stuff like that. Um, but also, and then for me, I look at that as inspiration and stuff. So anyways, that's, that's where your newsfeed is. And every once in a while you got a guy holding a sign that says, buy my stuff. And hopefully that's going to be disruptive enough. Hopefully that's going to catch your attention well enough. Hopefully they did a good, good enough job targeting you or look like audience did a good enough job targeting you. So hopefully like that, that little newsfeed is catching you if, if the, if the ad and the copy is written correctly. Um, but if you look to the left and you look to the right, of this, that's the grass field, and that's where all the tables are. So, so Josh, what are what's happening at those tables? People are just you know chatting with each other. Simply, yeah, right. It's where the conversation is, right? And, and I'm a, I'm an old school kind of sales guy. When I used to do belly to belly sales with people in home, and we always we always taught people you needed to get to the kitchen table because that's where the conversations were. That's where people also did business. Like maybe if they were uh, working on their checkbooks and they were um, managing their bills, right? They, they literally are at the, usually at the kitchen table. That's where also they have dinner. That's where they have conversations. Well, that's literally what messenger does for you because you're talking to your loved ones. You're talking to your family members. And also now you can finally talk to the businesses that you know, like, and trust, mm -hmm. uh, at those same tables at the same place where people have conversations. Nice. And, uh, I like that metaphor. Yeah. Great little metaphor I have on, on like what chat message messaging marketing is for your business. Although you're making me hungry for barbecue food now. <laughs> <laughs> Burgers and hot dogs. <laughs> man, you can't beat that. Good old American pastime. Uh, <laughs> awesome, man. So when did you get started in business and how did that even come about? Well, my background came from sales. Like uh, back in, I'm going to say when I was like 22 years old, 21 years old, 22 years old, I kind of got the taste of entrepreneurship. Um, I've had many, many businesses. Actually, I should say at 14 years old, I had my first taste of entrepreneurial shit. Um, literally was the, I was the kid that sold candy bars and bubble gum in between like periods in junior high school. Like I'd go to Costco, I'd buy stacks and I'd, I'd load up my locker and I was the guy selling those. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear something I did when I was in elementary school? So uh, I used to, this is when NES was a thing, you know, Nintendo entertainment yeah. system, you know, I'm a child of the eighties and, um, so I used to borrow NES cartridges, games, you know, from kids. Yeah. And I used to lease them out nice. to other kids. I was basically like that middleman, you know, and I was making yes. like a few bucks here and there. Anyway, so that's what I did. Nice. Yeah, we used to trade. I remember trading those two with kids. Nice. I, one, one year I traded a Ninja Star for a video game <laughs> and the kid got caught throwing it and I got to go see the principal's office and I had to write like, 500 times I will not bring Chinese stars to the school because they're illegal. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Make me think of that. So anyway. That's funny. So anyway, yeah. I, yeah, so yeah at 14, I actually started an arcade business, uh, like the stand-up arcade machines. Yeah. I went in partnerships with my grandma. My grandma was like one of my biggest influences in my life. She was 
uh, and uh, she was like one of those people that could didn't understand the word no. Like she just didn't understand it. Like we would go to we would go to like a um, uh, like a restaurant, and she'd say, "Hey, we need to put these video games in this restaurant." She'd go find the owner, and she'd literally talk to them, be like, "No, no," and no would eventually turn into, "Okay, sure. Where do you want to put it?" <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. So it sounds like she taught you, you know, sales, right? Yeah, I went into uh oh. Yeah, it was my first kind of seeing someone else do sales, and um, she went on to like underwrite stock and stuff like that for the for OTC, and um, and so yeah, I mean she was amazing. My my grandfather was an amazing salesperson, owned a real estate agency, and owned a um, a mortgage company, owned a bunch of restaurants, convenience stores all over Texas, um, and he was he was actually at one point like a top ten like wealthiest guy in Texas at one point. Uh, kind of lost it all. I, I watched him go up dips and dips and valleys, but that was like my, you know, my early youth kind of like paint, you know, designed who I was today and kind of helped me out, like start businesses as well. And then, um, at a certain point in my life, um, I decided I was, I was taking some college courses after school and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, this, I, this is not for me. Like I, I, I'm not good at sitting in class. Like I get fidgety and stuff like that. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at really studying homework. And I was like, what else could I do? And I started studying. There was like the two most uh, highest paid industries in the world was insurance and real estate. So I decided to get into the insurance industry um, and started working for a fortune 400, you know, platinum 400 company and became, and I worked my way up from the ground up. I became, I was like one of the top sales people. That's actually where Carl the shark sugar came from. Originally it was car, <laughs> was car, they called me Kark Sharky. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kark Sharky. Anyway, they called me that. I didn't, they came up with it because literally they had like an in-house TV show mm -hmm. and every single week my name was on like the top. Like yeah, for, yeah. for like, I want to say five months straight. That's like awesome. I, I almost think, I almost think that they got so sick of saying my name. They're like, we're just going to call him Kark Sharky. So they just, <laughs> it happened. Right. And then, uh, and then I became a man manager. I became a regional director. The next step would have been a, um, a partner. Um, but it had a lot of bureaucracy and, and politics and stuff that I just was done with. So decided to get out of it, started a brokerage company, uh, insurance. We still have it, but I don't really do anything with it much anymore. There's a couple agencies under it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just kind of a passive income at this point. Uh, and then, uh, and then I got the kind of got the bug for internet marketing in about 2007 after reading the four hour work week. And uh, like many other people out there. <laughs> yeah. I read that book and I was like, Oh my God, mind shift. Let's start changing everything. I went and I met, uh, um, uh, what's his name? I met, uh, um, Russell Brunson went to like an event he was hosting. This was way before he built click funnels. Um, he kind of gave me some inspirational stuff. He was, and it was kind of funny cause his book is kind of written around that same concept, which is do what you're good at, but do it online and become like the, you know, the authority figure for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and so, yeah, just, uh, just kind of all this stuff kind of happened. And I was like, I really had a big interest in software and then felt like because of my sales and now my marketing experience that I could actually kind of like look into the future of things and see like, where can I build stuff on top of? And, um, and I've just watched where Facebook has gone and, um, they've, they've, they've invested huge amounts of resources, um, you know, into this. And so I see a, a very big, long, great future in messenger marketing and, and, uh, it's just, it's just been so effective for our, like a lot of even our customer base. And also it's, it's been so like based off of like their own imagination because Facebook already has like all of this, this data. So they eliminated the need for forms when it comes to building, um, building a lead magnet, even like you don't need to go to your traditional form that asks for an email address or a phone number and a, and a name. Facebook's like, well, we already have that information. So why don't we build these entry points where people can get in with just a click of the button? Right. And it's stupid. It's like stupid, simple for you to build a list. Uh, but then what you do with them, pre-qualify them and stuff like that is kind of up to you with your business. Undoctrinate them and, and train them and educate them about your services and stuff in that niche and that, uh, that they have interest in. Yeah. But that's great for us marketers though, you know, just cause anytime we can make the entire, some part of the funnel frictionless, you know, the better, you know, the more results we're going to achieve and uh, Facebook's actually helping us do that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're allowing us to leverage their data. Yep. You know, yep. in, in, in so many different cool ways.
Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, cool. It is, so what is like your biggest e-com related, you know, um, success to date that you've been involved with? Yeah. So, um, there's a couple of different strategies I've been doing, um, been uh, really testing out. Um, one of them is what I call setting, I call it booby traps, you know, cause you know, you know what a booby trap is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like military. So yeah. 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 So like military actually has a manual called booby traps. It's a filled, filled manual, uh, an army filled manual called booby traps. Possibly. Uh, But basically like you literally like a booby trap is a mine on the ground and you're walking where there's traffic and there's traffic, it blows you up. But the kind that I like to teach teaches you how to like set these booby traps everywhere where your traffic is. And when people hit them, they're now on your list. Nice. I like it. I like it. So lead generation booby traps, lead generation booby traps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually I, I recently spoke in an event about it. Um, and it was funny cause I, I put in like some funny memes and pictures and stuff into it. it was, everybody had a blast. Um, but the one way that I taught, which I can actually sh- uh, share my screen, I know some of the people are audio, so we can try to be as, as descriptive as we can. Um, but I can share my screen and kind of give you, give your people just a really good, easy strategy for them to duplicate. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of share a piece of this. Cause I don't, some of this is, can be like very detailed. Like if I shared all of this and I'm pretty sure like messenger marketing is so new and, um, you know, I think one of the, the coolest things for me is I have now the opportunity to educate people about messenger marketing, but some of it's a little bit hard to like get people to to understand. But I think that a lot of, I think why you see a lot of people using um, email as a, um, as an example to like, you know, kind of compare to is because we all kind of grasp what email is, especially marketers. So um, what, what I, the cool thing that I, I, I like, I, it actually gets me excited. Some people say it's, it might be a little bit hard, but I get excited trying to help people understand that. And, um, just think of this, like when, when people hear the word bot or messenger bot, I've noticed that their eyes get glazy and they just kind of tune out, um, because it's complicated. And you know, they, like they say, when things are a little too, when they, when they think it's too complicated, uh, people just lose their, their, like they just kind of move away. Their attention. Yeah. yeah their, their attention leaves. Exactly. Yep. Um, so an easy way to, to think of a chat bot, when people say the word chat bot, just think of it as an email campaign. That's all it is. All it is is a message that you write and you send to uh, another person and they receive it. However, it has a, it has a two way um, perspective to it. So that two way perspective is, Um, you know, my favorite books growing up as a kid was those choose your own adventure books. So you would go to like, you would like read like, you know, the, the dragon slayer meets the dragon. Um, do you, does he a pull out his flamethrower? Does he B slice him with a sword? So you're like, okay, I'm going to pick B and then it goes, okay, go to page 59. So messenger marketing is kind of like that because you're, you're written the book basically, or you've written the message but you're going to, you're going to ask those certain level of questions. So that way when they click it, it does a couple of cool things for you. One, it creates a two way conversation between you and your customer in the thousands versus like one at a time when you'd go see somebody. Um, and then two, it gives you a data point. So like if you knew that they chose the sword to slay the dragon with, then boom, I know they like swords. So I'm going to be able to tag them for future needs, especially with e-commerce. I'm going to be able to tag them that I know that they like swords. And if I look at my list and and segment my list at a later point, I could see how many people, like let's say you had 10,000 people on your messenger list. I could see how many of those people like swords. So then I could say, well, wow, maybe we should start selling swords because 40% of everybody on our list likes swords. So and that's, that's a really cool, like, I think it's a really cool way to explain what oh, yeah. chatbots are. Well, so, uh, you just, ha- you just uh, made me a little nostalgic there because I was thinking about, you know, those books that I also dove into when I was younger. It actually reminded me too, and I'm going to just be a total geek here and just put this out there. But uh, when I was in high school, I had a moment, a moment, I got away from it really quickly, but a moment where I dove into role-playing games. You know, like the book role playing games, not just video game role playing mm-hmm. games. Yeah, and, and it was like the same like approach where you had choices, you make these choices, and but I love how you're using that to kind of explain you know chatbot marketing. Now, with that said, do you feel like that chatbots and chatbot marketing and Facebook Messenger? Do you feel like at 
it will replace email at some point? And I know that's a you know polarizing question, but I just would love to get your feedback on that. Yeah, I don't think it's going to exactly replace it. Um, but actually, let me show you. Let me show you something that I got recently. Um, I don't think it's going to replace it, um, but I think demographically, it's just gotten worse. Like if you look at this demographics between age 13 to 24, yep. um, literally like the kids have already integrated it into the fabric of their life. The, and they've basically abandoned email. So I, I mean, I think that demographically it's going to change, but I also think it's like evolution. So, you know, it's the evolution of marketing. It's evolution of where people are going. I think people 25 to 44 are just like, I'll just use whatever people that are 45. They're just like, I'll use whatever my kids are using and my grandkids are using. Right. Right. Um, but if you were to look at this, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, a, a pretty strong point that the younger demographics are using. Now I don't think it's going to email is going to go away. Um, and I also think messenger is going to get more busy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I think also the way Facebook has literally, um, kind of designed messenger is, is it's about user um, experience and, and also engagement. So as long as there's a lot of good user experience and there's a lot of good engagement, um, I think that, um, you know, you're, you'll have a good, you'll, you'll, you'll understand that part of messen uh, of marketing, uh, with messenger. And if you're good at that, then, you know, you won't have the chance of being unsubscribed, but just like email, you want to make sure that you can, you know, unsubscribe, you keep it clean. You're providing value to your list where email is just like, you can spam the crap out of people and you're not providing really any necessarily any value. And you're also, it's so storyboard based sometimes to try to pull three people through a message to get them to click a link yep. where this is more conversational. Right. You know, so yeah. much more. And this is actually important stats to look at because if you look throughout history, whenever like something takes hold with like a younger demographic, it then expands, you know, up to older demographics, Facebook, Instagram, are all examples of that. Um, so I, I mean, this is just showing that more than likely we're going to see that same thing happen with like older demographics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's going to, ch it'll change like as the generations change. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think email is going to go away. I mean, I, I think email will be good for a long time, but yeah, I think you just need to add this. Like, I mean, the, the open rates and the click through rates currently are so high. I think that'll kind of change a little bit as things change. Um, and ultimately Facebook wants you, you know, they want their users to have a good experience with whoever they're doing business with. So there's a lot of like policy and stuff like that coming down the line, you know, and, and that's why it's like, it's early now. It's a good time to get in and start to like immersing yourself into, into messenger marketing. Cause there is some stuff you need to learn along the way, but once you get it, um, you can do that. That's where the creativity side that, you know, the, that stuff comes in or hire someone that's really good at it, you know? Yeah, totally. So for the audience, like, what do you feel like are just some of the fundamentals that, you know, they need to kind of take in to approach using a chat bot effectively in their business? Yeah. I mean, the fundamentals is, um, native marketing. I mean, you know, like native marketing, for those of you that don't know what that is, is, is content based marketing. So when I say like providing value, you can go and you could look at a past of all of your emails, your company has come up with, uh, you can come up and look at like blogs. If you're writing blogs, uh, you can look at whatever content, even if you're e-commerce, you can do product reviews, you know, you can do customer testimonials. Um, you can do contests, you can do, um, these things I call the Lexi, uh, flexi list building method, which is a, a lead generation as well. Um, the other side of that that's uh, foundational, I think, um, and, and really important is the customer support aspect of it as well. You could take like the five to 10 most commonly at, you know, asked questions in your e-commerce store. But we all know like the first one is, um, you know, when's my product going to be shipped or how long, you know, when can I expect my product, especially if you're doing drop shipping? Cause you know, it's like 20 days, typically 14 to 20 days, depending on where you're shipping from and where it's going. Mm -hmm. So that question right there is, is something that's asked a lot. You could actually create an automated bot based off of a keyword 
and that particular question would be answered. And now you're saving, you're, you're increasing company morale with your own uh, employees who have to ask that damn question or answer that damn question over and over again. Uh, you're saving the cost of hi hiring an employee that, to um, answer that question. Um, and then, you, you know, you could use your employees to do stuff that's a little bit more product, you know, productive for them. Yep. Um, nice. And so, yeah, you just take your five most commonly asked questions. And the cool thing is like when you, after you answer a question, um, you can now lead up to a sales question for them, or you could have certain keyword sales questions that people ask and then have that targeted to a certain product that you sell in your store, completely automated running seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Once right. you see enough, you forget about it. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I just, I thought I would uh, ask you that just to, so this way the audience, if they are new to chatbot marketing, if they're still like learning and figuring out how to really apply that to, to their business that they can you know learn from one of the experts here when it comes to what are some of the fundamentals that you really need to take into account when you're applying how a chatbot can really help you in your business. Yeah, totally. So yeah, um, what I can do here is kind of just show you like, like probably one of the most actionable things that anybody can do with their e-commerce store, uh, or any business really. I mean, you could use this for pretty much any business. Um, a lot of times you lose customers, you know, on your store, you have a lot of people that kind of drop off or leave or pop away. Um, you can use this with like an exit intent, like what I'm going to show you guys, you could do exit intent. Um, you can set these, you can send these anywhere, which, which I'll get into. Um, but I, I've, I've, there's another term I coined and uh, I just liked it because I think it really explains what it means. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, people that have done chat marketing, they know what m.me links are, but people that haven't, they're like, what's an m.me link? Mm -hmm. Um, m.me links are basically messenger links that take you directly into a message directly. It's like you could put, you could put this link, you know, it's usually m.me forward slash your username uh, for your personal profile. But for every one of your businesses, they have like, you can set them up to where they say forward slash business name. Well, now they also have another link they can stick on them, which references them to a third party service. I own Segmate app. So we have a, a third party service that builds these links for you. Um, and then you associate a bot to that link. Uh, once you build the link out, now on the end of that link, you, you got to give something of value or trade, just like what a lead magnet is. It's usually like an ethical bribe uh, to trade something of value for your, your email address. Well, this is doing the same thing, but it's doing it with a link instead of requiring a form, which again, lowers that entry point, that barrier of entry, makes it a little less frictionless because Facebook already has the data. The beautiful thing is once they click it and they click the get started button, like they're on your list like that quick. Well, it's nice. Um, so, so I'll just kind of go over. I mean, a lot of people may or may not have heard of what, uh, uh, a lead magnet is. So I'll get into that, but I call this the flexi list building method because it's the flexiest way you can build a list because you can stick these links on anything you can stick a link on. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as we get into it, but just a, a quick little, you know, like checklist that I have here on the screen. If you're watching, which is, uh, you got to have a lead magnet, a lead trade offer, which is a lead magnet opt-in for XXX. Um, so one, an info product, these are just ideas, but like some sort of info product that you deliver, uh, a software potentially, um, a free download, a PDF, a core series, a training, a blueprint, uh, a case study, a quote subscription or coupon or discount. So, you know, e-commerce is good for e coupon codes or discount codes work really well. It's a good little trade for their information, give them a discount code and also to get a sell and start monetizing right away with it. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing you need to do is you need to build a delivery bot. So I call these delivery bots, um, but basically is when they click it, what kind of information are you going to give them immediately after that? That's going to, it's going to like, take care of that appetite, right? You just showed them the food. Do you want this food? Yes, I do. Okay, click here. Okay, here's your food. Now you can eat and then you feel satisfied afterwards. Uh, then you also need to build an m.me link. Which Again, is you're, to, you're making me think about barbecue, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I know, <laughs> good barbecue. Texas, you can go to Texas. And I'm, I'm sure Arizona has some good barbecue Yeah, too. Arizona's okay. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no worries. So uh, m.me link, you basically like we just talked about what those are, um, you just connect it to that delivery bot. Um, we use a cloaker service because m.me links look ugly, I think. And they have all these like trail like numbers and letters on it. No, I, I don't think it gives you a call to action. So if you use a pretty link builder, 
um, or cloaker, you know, that's what I would use with like a, it'd be like, um, like we use one called click dot site and then it's okay. forward slash whatever you want it to say. Nice. Okay. It'll forward to the, the other thing you can do with cloakers is you can add a pixel to them. So, and you can also see like geographical locations, like where people are clicking them at. Um, you can, like I said, add a pixel to it. So you know that these are people that like that and you can build a, a lookalike audience, uh, based off people that are interested on that certain thing. Um, and then you want to spread the links free freely. So that's the last thing you just, wherever you can go. And, I, and I'm going to give you guys some ideas as we continue to go through here. Yeah. So real quick. So the click, it was click dot site you said, right? Yeah. C L I K dot S I T E. It's, it's our own in service. Okay. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. okay. That's All awesome. Right. You're listening to e-commerce all stars. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> E-commerce All-Stars. Do you want the best results possible for your business using Facebook advertising? By listening to this show, you know the impact that listening to some of the best and brightest in e-commerce can have for your business. Right now, you can do the same for your Facebook advertising in Josh's powerful new book. In this book, some of the best Facebook advertisers for e-commerce that have collectively spent millions on advertising have revealed their powerful strategies and tips for getting the most out of every dollar spent on Facebook ads. Ads. Every contributor has also given their wisdom on how your business can stay ahead of the trends happening right now so you can win into 2019 with Facebook ads without risking advertising dollars. Molly Pittman, J. Trevor Chapman, David Schloss, Sam Bell, Josh Marson, and many more have truly given their best stuff in this book, Facebook Advertising Trends and Strategies for E-Commerce, the 2019 edition. Best in e-commerce. Commerce All Stars. With the pixel, uh, like, can you just go ahead and like include Facebook, you know, Google, multiple pixels, mm -hmm. like, be able to tag yeah. them, regard yeah, the tag manager, tag manager or, or Google or Facebook pixels, whatever you want to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's killer. Yeah, give you some good data points, you know, on those people as well. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, step one, find a lead magnet. Okay, I'm uh, on the screen. I'm showing you one. It's just basically like a free gift. It's a PDF download. People like to learn about the flexi lift list building method. They can get this free download. Um, a lead magnet, basically, it's a noun, an irresistible bribe offering a specific chunk of value to a prospect in exchange for their contact information. The goal of a lead magnet is to maximize the number of targeted leads uh, you are getting from an offer. And I, I did, if you're on the screen, I did give uh, homage to Digital Marketer because I think that they do a good job of teaching you what a lead magnet is. So we'll have that link if you want. Um, so what is some of the things you can give let away? Me, let me give the uh, listeners uh, actually that link real quick. So uh, go to, you know, click with a K, not, not CK. So with a K dot site uh, forward slash make lead magnet to be able to uh, go to that article and, and, and really f like learn how to build an amazing lead magnet. Yeah. It's just free information. Digital marketers just giving it to you. Um, and it's just some good ideas. Yep. yep. Uh, so, so blueprint uh, or case study, um, a free download, like we were saying, a PDF or something, because it's easy to deliver, you know, digitally. Um, how about like a free course? You could do like a free online course. I like courses too, because, you know, if you're like, if your product or brand or an influencer of some sort, you know, you have something of value that you can give away for free. But there's a, there is a, something that I always follow in my marketing, which is a Harvard case study that said people need to see you seven to 14 times. And it's probably even getting more before they recognize you as an authority or they recognize your brand or before they ever do business with you, before they know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. So one thing I like about doing a mini course or something like that for free is if they, if they like the course, they're going to get to see you more and more and more. And every time they see you subconsciously, now they're going to remember you as an authority in what you do or your product or your brand. Yep. Good point. Uh, you do free workshops. Um, that's another uh, easy one to do. You can do your coupon code, save 50% off, blah, blah, blah. You can use, I like to use like the graphics that look like coupon codes. So like on your e-commerce store, you can create like a, an exit intent pop. And for those of you that don't know what that means, it means it's like when you have intention to leave a site. So you, you came onto a site because of traffic and then you go to exit that traffic 
um, you would take your little cursor and you move it up. As soon as you move your cursor up to, to exit out, something pops up um, that, gets, that gets them to want to you know, trade their information. One of them that works really, really well is the graphic that looks like a coupon code. And you can test different, um, you can test different codes. You could do a 40%, a 20%, you know, a 50%, and you can split test these um, and figure out which one kind of works best. Um, I'll also drop in that we use a, a, an app called Let's, uh, Let's Spinio, Let's Spin.io. Um, because they do, they do like the spinning app. They do like an exit intent spinning and it gives you, it, it gamifies the exit intent. It works really, really good for e-commerce. And they also have an integration with Segmate and our integration requires them to click the, the button to the checkbox. And that checkbox is a little bit different than what I'm showing you here because it's not an M.me link, but it's another entry point that'll put people on your list immediately after they click it. So we've had a lot of success with that as well. I just figured I'd drop that in there as well. well that's just huge because, you know, if someone's bouncing off your site, you know, you want to try to get them as a lead, you know, um, and you can do that, you know, with what you just said, that tactic, uh, you can subscribe them to, you know, your Facebook messenger list. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a great, you know, gamified exit intent. It makes it fun for the end user. They feel like they're playing in a game like online. And then when they get the, the coupon code, they feel like they earned it too, which is kind of cool. And then also, like we said, they go into messenger and we, we actually create kind of a sequence that'll ask them like, Hey, thanks for, you know, it looks like you, you signed up. Did, were you, did you win? Yes or no? No, I didn't win. It's like, okay. Oh, shucks. You lost or, I never would say you lost, but I'd say, oh, shucks, that's too bad. Better, better luck next time. Um, next, next week we have blah, blah, blah coming up. Would you like us to send information when that comes? And then if they, if they do now I could tag them saying, yeah, I'm going to be able to send them more information. Um, then what I would do in that sequence is the next day we would say surprise flash coupon code. Would you like to use it? Yes or no? Yes. I'd like to use it. Okay. Let's see which one you earned. I kind of tried to gamify it a little bit in messenger as well. And the same thing with this stuff, like any, any of your sequences, just like email, you create a campaign, you create a sequence or a drip campaign. You do the same thing in messenger bots, but you just keep, you just make them a little bit more conversational. So someone, someone goes to exit the, the page, this coupon says super coupon today, uh, live today only. Would you like to use it? Yes. Click the button below that button has the M.me link clicked into it. And now they're in messenger that you deliver the coupon code that, you know, like if you're using Shopify, you can actually deliver a URL that has the code built into the URL. So that's cool. Uh, next thing is a free trial, maybe for software. I'm just using this as an example though. Maybe you have a, um, you have a, um, a subscription box. Okay. That's a really good one just to bring up. If you have a subscription box, you know, monthly subscription, you probably have a free trial or of some sort, or you have a, um, uh, a lead magnet or a tripwire. That's another a term used out there, which is basically like a free plus shipping offer. So you could say, you know, that could be your actual hook. That could be your actual flexi list uh, building was, you know, Hey, would you like to get this product for free? Only pay shipping, click here. Now they're in there and then you're taking them back to, to, uh, to your, your store. Then you're, they're using a code cause you're, or your, or funnel. Okay. And they're, they're using a code or they're using a specific funnel where it's free plus shipping. It says, you know, the sales copy, everything's written there nice and neatly. They click on it. Just, they just pay shipping, which pays for the product. And then now they're inside of a funnel where you're, you know, you're, you're taking them wherever you want to take them, but um, you're upselling them immediately after that to pay for your ad costs and your creative costs. Um, also, this is one that I think a lot of people need to start using. Um, some people do uh, a free daily quote subscription. Okay. And in every niche, probably has something like this that they can do. Like, you know, if you're in the Christian niche, there's probably a bunch of, you know, quotes from the Bible you could use. If you're in the entrepreneurial niche, you could use like the, some of the ones I use an example here. You know, if you're in the, um, I don't know, underwater basket weaving niche, I don't know. I'm sure there's probably some famous person that wrote a book about it and you could use quotes from that book. But the idea is, is that you're using your brand, you're leveraging your brand to continue for them to continue to see you, you know, seven to 14 times so they can make a decision to buy from you. You'll have a, an amazing return of customer base on your store just by implementing that too, by the way, because you're keeping, you're keeping in their mind's eye, you're keeping in their, in their face. Yeah. Keeping them engaged. That's nice. 
some people uh, that we help with these will say, well, Carl, I don't really have any ideas. I'm not a creative person. Well, guys, there's, there's, this stuff is available. It's like for free anyway. Like you can go online and you could find what's called PLR, private label rights. And just make sure you read the, um, you know, the description or the, the case uses that you can use them for. As long as they allow you to repurpose it, rebrand it, put your links in it, and also give away a, a, a part of it for free, then that you're going to have a really, really good looking lead magnet completely done for you. You just have to make some adjustments because you want to put your brand into it. Um, and this, we actually did this. We actually did this on one of our stores and it works really, really well. Um, but yeah, it's, you would find whatever your product is and you kind of, you can actually even kind of use this with this as well. And like, so what are some examples of, uh, you know, some pr uh, PLR, you know, content pieces that you're using right now? Yeah. So, uh, one, one that we did was a five day audio book and PDF download. And we took a, we took a, uh, you know, we, we found a PLR piece in this specific niche. Every niche has PLR out there. You can, you can go just, just Google search PLR and you'll yep. find like a million sites. Um, but I like the audio book because it brings another element to the delivery bot versus like just a PDF. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, I really try to use as much of the different I you to do inside of there, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, because it's kind of like dating, you know, and the more times you take someone or the more times you court somebody, the, the better chances, you know, you're going to get lucky kind of thing. So, so we, so we kind of, I like to use I different ones. referring to relationships here, just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah, but the same, these same tactics or these same techniques as building relationships is this, it's, there's, it's no different than in messenger. Right. right. And that's, and that's why too, like, um, I think it was like 62% of people said that they would rather, um, use messenger or they'd rather, um, uh, uh, talk to a business, uh, then on a phone and also like 60, I don't have exact numbers in front of it. It was like 60 plus percent said that being able to message a business makes them feel more likely to trust a business. Um, it's the same things that happen in the offline world, uh, online, but it's automated once you build it. So that's, again, that's why I love messenger marketing so much, uh, so much more than just email marketing or video, even just video. I mean, it all is works really, really well and you can incorporate most of it right into, into messenger as well. So here's like an example, like this is inside of our app and inside of our app, we have all of these different elements. So you can add text, you can add images, you can add cards, you can add gallery, uh, you can add list, um, you can add video, you can add files and you can add audio. So you would build your, your lead magnet kind of using as many of these as you, as you want. Okay. Um, also like gallery, you know, one of the things you can build is, um, you can build a thing called a persistent menu and you can have a gallery bot come up where it shows all of your collections of your store. And then it has a link going right back to your store, uh, immediately from there. So that's a really good case use of this one. Um, text, obviously we know like that's where your sales copy or your, your information is going images kind of great for proof. Uh, other, um, other customers who have also bought a certain product, what they, you know, what they like. So social proof, um, cards, just, uh, these are kind of cool because you can make now images with links on the image. They work really good for coupons, um, gallery, like I explained, uh, list videos. We know what videos look like. Um, you know, you can have a cool video product review, stuff like that in there, or if it's a training, like, you know, if you buy PLR too, some of these PLRs are, are actual training, like a PowerPoint training where a guy's talking and showing on a PowerPoint, um, what the content it is. So you're delivering a ton of value to them. Um, files would be where you'd have your PDF uploads and videos where you can listen to it. So yeah, all of these different things are just elements that create kind of a, an experience for that person. It's like taking them on another date is the way, the way I look at it. And then um, a great thing too, just to jump in real quick, Carl, um, with the chat bot, you can deliver whatever that promise is right away, fairly instantaneously, uh, because everybody has Facebook has messenger on their devices. And so, you know, wherever they're seeing this offer, they can get it right away and they can engage with your brand, your business right away because of that. 
Exactly. It's, it's instant gratification. Exactly. And that's what people want. You know, um, David Marcus, all, it kind of reminded me, I'll bring this up real quickly, but David Marcus had said he wanted, he, he actually said, I want to get rid of the 800 number. And I, that's a really bold thing to say. But, um, but if you think about it, like the 800 number, you call your bank and it's never one of those things that you really totally enjoy. It's not, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're dialing five, you're dialing six, you got the wrong person. Oh my gosh, I got to call again. Sometimes they drop you. Um, where a bot, you can build out in a sense where it actually answers the question uh, instantaneously for the end user as long as it's built there. So quicker. it's quicker. Yeah, it's yeah just automated answering machines that are robots that, you know, direct you from point A to point B to, to point C and so forth. So annoying. Like they just annoy me all the time. <laughs> So then you would basically build your m.me link. This is what it looks like in our software. You build a little link right there. Then you choose the delivery bot. So of course, everything's going to be built based off of building that, you know, that first little delivery bot where you deliver it. Um, and then uh, you choose that. Now, once you've chosen that, then like I said, we use our own in-house cloaking service, but there's a ton out there. Um, that you can use, you can, you know, you can use bit.ly, you could use, uh, I don't know if Google's are still around, but there's a bunch, there's yeah, a Google bunch of shut there's down, but uh, bit.ly is still out there, obviously. Um, and bit.ly you could do custom uh, URLs too with, I think. Yep. You can. So, I mean, there's a ton out there. Um, you could like, you could build your own however you want. Um, and then step three is you want to, you want to freely share these m.me links. Like you want to put these m.me uh, m .me links or these cloaked links, these pretty links everywhere you possibly and possibly can think. And, and people even hit me up with stuff I hadn't even thought about sometimes about this, but there's, there's tons of way. One of them is Facebook groups, Facebook pages, fan pages, if you own them. Um, I always just say with caution, when it comes to Facebook groups or groups, you should find out who is the main, you know, who runs it and ask for permission unless it's in the rules that it's a freely shared group. Um, but if you get permission, what I would do is I would approach somebody of a group and say, Hey, I specialize in this particular thing that your group offers. And I've written a blog post about it. I'd like to re I'd like to rewrite it for your group. And I'd like to give them a free gift if they, if they like the content. Is that okay if I do that? And if they say yes, which a good percent of them, of them don't even have enough content to keep their group active anyway, a lot of them might just say, yeah, go for it. If you're going to provide group or they might want to see it or something like that, but it's worth your time to get it out there because there's groups on there that have, you know, 50,000 to a million to, to 5 million people on there. If you get one in, in a good active group with 5 million people, you're getting free leads for, for real in that niche, specific niche. Yep. Um, so then also like this was just an example, but I just did this a post on my own, you know, my own page. And in one day we had like 47 clicks in one day. Um, and again, that was this by any means you can do way better than this. Um, but I'm just, I'm just sharing this with you is that just personally, you know, personally doing it, it was, it just showed success. Um, you can do this on forums. Blogs are really good that you can find out there. You can ghost write for, not ghost write, but you can write for a lot of blogs out there. A lot of blogs are looking for people to add content to. So you find a blog that's in your uh, specific niche and you say, Hey, are you guys looking for, um, guest, uh, blog writers? I'd love to, I'd love to write about X, Y, Z. Uh, and I have some good content for them and also be delivering them a free, you know, a free gift for reading it. Um, forms, same thing, tons of forms out there. You can share these in conversations. And I don't even think you really need to ask for permission on these type of things because they're, it's, it's all so conversational. It's more of like in a post unless you started a new post or something like that. Yep. Yep. Especially like a Reddit, you know, or similar type of forum. Yeah. So yeah, any social media com comment section, you know, even in YouTube, you know, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of great ones out there. Um, I use these as an example. There's a ton, ton out there. Um, Quora and make sure you know the audience like Quora is like developer kind of a little bit more, um, I don't know. I would just say it's like, there's a lot more de developers there, a little bit more complex of conversations going on there, but there's a lot of traffic there. Right. And there could be, if you're in a certain niche where you're selling, I don't know, hardware or something like that, maybe that you could provide some really good, um, you know, graphs and diagrams and stuff like that inside of Quora. Uh, medium is really good. Medium is actually really blown up in the last few years. Um, you can actually create your own blog on medium, which is kind of interesting. 
Um, and also you can, you can write on medium just freely. Um, and if, if it's good content, people will upvote your content and they'll actually be searched more on their, their own algorithm. Um, and so, yeah, I love medium. Actually, I think it's a really good one out there. Um, Reddit, Reddit's one of those ones where you got to know your stuff. Like you will get trolled if you don't. <laughs> so, okay. so you got to be careful there. It is a, it is definitely a lot of trolling going on there, but at the same time, there's tons of traffic there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I, what do you call it? Um, LinkedIn has pulse and pulse is another one, tons of traffic. They were actually pushing that quite a bit in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. If you have good content kind of works the same way as medium and core where they can get up upvoted. Um, I also use steam it on here. I don't know a lot about them, but I know it's like more in the crypto space. Uh, but they, again, it's a free blog where you can set your stuff, your, your, uh, content, and have your delivery bot set in there. And again, if it's, if it's content driven, um, it's a good chance that your lead quality is going to be a little bit high as well. It's, it's has good searchability too for, for ranking. Um, and so yeah, all around, um, awesome. you build your yeah, with medium too. A nice thing about medium is, uh, not only can you actually, you know, create blog posts on medium and create your own blog. Um, but you can export that. You can export it all and then you could basically import it and use it to be able to create blog, you know, posts on your website. Um, John Morrow, who's known, you know, in our niche uh, to be one of the like leaders when it comes to, you know, creating very successful blogs that, you know, do seven plus figures. Uh, he just pub he published an article fairly recently where he uh, went over a very easy process where you can basically, you know, create content like topics that you will, you know, you basically create an article on a specific content or subject matter, publish it on medium just to test and validate that that subject matter is something that is going to like, you know, resonate with the audience on, you know, on medium. And then once you've done that and you've seen like good traction there, then you can export it and you can use it to start creating your blog, which is awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I, I mean, I like medium. It's, it seems like, a lot of people are using it. A lot of big businesses are using it too. I mean, even Messenger, the developing team has their own uh, blog built on Medium as well for for communicating. You know, like a, a way to like do pre almost like like mini press releases on new UI updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's cool. So, so I mean, there's I mean, there's so many cool things inside of Medium, and uh, I really like it. Like, if you're someone that you know is considering doing their own blog. Um, on WordPress, which is fine where you're hosting it, you may want to consider doing it on medium and building it on their platform because they already have so much darn traffic there and people, people really like it, you know, cause it gets upvoted. So it's going to always be pretty killer content on the people that get up upvoted as well. And there's probably some really cool strategies too on like building, I don't know, a link wheel or something around your content as you do it too, where you could probably increase your own, you know, your own upvoting process. There's probably some pretty cool, kind of next level stuff, but probably some really cool stuff you could do, uh, do that as well. And then really this is just, it's free to, to do this by the way. Like, I mean, it costs you a little bit of your time. Um, and you need to buy like some PLR if you don't have it, unless you already have some, some stored content already. Other than that, you just build these things out freely, share these links everywhere and, uh, you're going to build a list for free. And now there are paid ways too. Um, but I really just wanted to share this, just this one way with people, um, so that way they could, um, kind of wrap their minds around it, but you could do paid, like you could do paid, um, you know, native ads, like Facebook likes that stuff too. You could go like, I know, I, I don't know when this will come out exactly, but like right now, you know, everybody's talking about the MGK disc to Eminem and Eminem's response, the, the kill shot. Well, there's so much like crazy traffic right now because of, because of like people are interested in that because it's so relevant for the time right now. Mm -hmm. So if you wrote like your niche and how your niche somehow is a part of this, you could probably get some of that crazy traffic. Not to yeah. say it's going to be the best traffic, but you could definitely hack it a little bit and then you could pre qualify people in your bot or find out what their interest points are and then sell leads or something like that. I mean, there's so many, so many ways you can, you can smart viral hack there, you know, recognize what's uh, popular right now, you know, in, you know, society, so to speak, or your niche, even, you know, what's, you know, going viral. Um, and then, you know, write a con write some sort of content that ties into that in some way, shape or form. Uh, so this way your content's found. I mean, you know, and then like you can use your strategies here to be able to, you know, get people from 
you know, your content, your, your article to come into, you know, Facebook messenger. And then of course you can then take them through your funnel from there as well. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's just a, this is just a really good lead building con, uh, lead building strategy. But even like just to go even further, like let's say you did a post about what's going and what's relevant today. Now you could actually search people that are interested on that in Facebook and then push an ad to that article. Yep. And then in that article you have, and like, because it's so viral at the moment, it'll have huge shareability. It'll go viral for yourself. Like you could push your own ad to go viral. And then, uh, as people click on there, you have your exit pops, you have all your stuff. That's your free gifts and stuff peppered throughout the, uh, the actual content itself. And you're building a list pretty cheap, pretty cheap way to build a list. Totally. Um, so you can see on the screen, like you, you can see if you're watching, but we show like, like your delivery bot, um, kind of here is like maybe if you're delivering on a, on something else other than messenger. Um, but you could put links in eBooks, social media, online meetings, guest blog post. Uh, you can hyperlink it in mail email as well. You know, like if you have a list and you want to start converting them into messenger, um, your thank you page. So like on, if you use a thank you page, everybody has a thank you page after you purchase. Um, you can build a graphic with something free of value and then they have to click on the link. We use these on webinars a lot too. So like after they, um, they register for a webinar, we say, Hey, would you like something of value? Click here. If it's date specific, we'll also give them reminders on when we go live for our webinars as well. We're also tagging them. Um, also blog posts, um, you know, with your call to action, free gift and, um, any lead lead magnet opt in, um, banner ads too. You could technically put links on banner ads. You could put links on Instagram, uh, stories. So you could have the links on Instagram stories ad. Mm -hmm. If you have a big enough account where you have 10,000 or more, you can do just straight links, I believe. Um, and then, you know, you just have your delivery bought free gift or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, okay. Definitely. So that's, that's pretty much about it. I mean, at the beginning part, I, you know, I kind of gave you the same list. If you guys are watching it, um, feel free to make a copy of that. And, uh, it's really like, that's all you do is just follow kind of those steps. And, uh, you do need to have, you know, segment, you need to have some sort of messenger bot delivery source. Um, you need to have, you know, your, your, uh, whatever your, your lead magnet is, whatever that free gift is. I will uh, say the higher the perceived value and the most relevant the gift is the higher the conversion rate you're going to see. Which, yeah, that's an important point to make, you know, because, uh, if someone listening or watching this, if they want to take advantage of this strategy and apply it to their business, then you really want to think through what that free offer that, you know, freebie is going to be, uh, because you want it to, like you said, you want it to be as valuable as possible. So this, so this way you are prepping that person, uh, to become a customer. You know, if they see value from that, that first transaction, cause it's a transaction. Yes. They're not buying anything yet, but it's still a transaction. And if they see a lot of value from that first transaction, then more than likely, you know, you'll have a better opportunity, a better conversion, uh, on whatever, purchase offer that you make to them following this free lead magnet that you're giving them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. Well, Carl, thanks. Thanks again, man, for sharing that, that strategy. That was an incredible strategy and definitely can lead to, uh, you know, a lot of leads being generated very fast. Uh, especially if you really tactically plan it out, you know, you really like know exactly like where you're going to leave your, you know, your uh, links. Um, what would you call them? I, I call them something else, but I want to use your term. I call it the flexi list build, building method. Well, what was the link you, you oh. M dot me, you just call it M dot me links. Well, yeah, the M dot me links are the ugly links, I think. Cause it's like the direct to messen, you know, direct to messenger links. Yep. Um, but yeah, just a pretty link cloaker, you know, of yep. some sort we have, okay. yep. we have our own in-house one. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, there's a ton out there. Yeah. I always use a reference URL. That's, but I just, you know, call it the name out of mini chat. But, uh, so you know, obviously having a good tactical approach there, you're using those links, you know, being able to drive a lot of traffic directly into your bot, you know, deliver that free lead magnet using Segmate. And then from there, you can then ask them for their email address, get them onto your list and you can make offers to them past that point is it basically, that's the summary of the, uh, the flexi, uh, list building method, right? Yeah. The, I mean, the flexi list building method is just literally like making it super simple to build a list. Yep. Um, yeah, the method is just, it's just like a delivery method uh, yep. for your, your lead magnet. 
Yep. And then what you decide to do with them after that is based off of your business needs once, you know, needs basically. So yep. Yep. You know, most people want to drive revenue and they want to drive traffic to certain offers, stuff like that. But uh, think of this as just like, it's, it's leading value first. So if you always provide value, your list is going to be really highly engaged with you and kind of the better, you know, your persona, like your, your customer or your avatar of your customer, the better you're going to be able to create these things, I think for your business. Mm -hmm. And, and also too, like you may not know that information right now, but you build more of these, like you build your first one that might seem like the hardest one to do. It's like riding a bicycle. You know, the first time you ride a bicycle, you probably crashed it a few times. The next day you got back up, you did it again until you finally were riding the bike. So, I mean, I would challenge you to just like build your first one, get it out of the way, then learn from it, like sit back and go, okay, what did we do? Right. What did we do wrong? What are we going to do differently? And then on the next one, do the same thing, build another one. So, Oh, and then also you're collecting all these little data points mm -hmm. about your customer. You're learning who your customer is, what their interests are, you know, how you can provide value to them. In fact, even ask them, how can I provide value to you? You know, create surveys. And, and it is like ask, it's like a survey inside a messenger because of all these data points that you're going to be able to collect yep. uh, as you build these things. And, and don't feel um, uh, over, you know, there's no reason to feel overwhelmed. It's just, you need to get started. And the only reason why you may feel overwhelmed is because it's new, you know, right. just like riding a bike for the first time. It was new. You don't have experience with it. Yeah. You don't have experience with it. Best way to get experience is just to get your hands dirty and just do it. Just get in there and do it. You're going to learn so much just by doing it. You're going to learn a lot about marketing. You're going to learn a lot about your customers. You're going to be able to feed your customers better in the future. You're going to be able to grow, grow a better database. You yep. know, so how can e-commerce companies like, you know, they're, let's just say they're using this strategy to be able to, you know, um, build their list as fast as possible. Basically it's going to be, you know, down to, you know, um, what, what, where their content's being published. Uh, obviously the, the pieces of content, you know, the conversion of the offer, you know, but once they get, you know, the subscriber on Facebook and what, what do you recommend next? you know, that works that you've seen in your experience, you know, with e-commerce companies that you've, you know, been connected with on yeah. some level, like, what do you recommend that they do on top of the flexi, you know, building, you know, method to, um, to be able to like monetize the people coming in? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one of the best ways that I've found is, is you need to have some, like, I'd say like a monthly contest. So like, if you have like a contest, especially e-commerce, you can build monthly contests um, on social media very easily mm -hmm. and you can deliver coupons inside a messenger. Like it's, it's probably one of the probably under most underlooked methods out there, but it works incredibly, incredibly well. Um, like I shared on with the flexi list building method is always have these booby traps, you know, set anywhere you can put a link on your store. You should do it. You could have, you know, the thank you page, the exit pops, the little slide ins as they're like um, scrolling on your page, um, sticky bars. I mean, anywhere you could stick where you have your traffic currently going to, you want certain people to fall on these booby traps and sort of fall into your list. Um, yeah, as many inroads basically as possible. Yeah. And then like, if you decide to do contest, it kind of works the same way as the list building thing as well. Mm -hmm. Is If you have something of a high value you want to give away, do a weekly contest on that um, and announce the winners use, use messenger to deliver the information. You know um, there's actually like a whole, like it's a, it's a way more in depth strategy for it. Probably don't have time for it, but, um, but there's definitely more you can do with it. There's more ways to sort of hack, hack with it as well. Well, can you give us maybe like a, a short and dirty version of that? Maybe, you know, in like a few quick minutes here or, yeah. or at least point like the audience to, uh, into a resource that can help them be able to learn what it is that you're, you know, hinting towards. Yeah. Um, can we share like a link? I could give people access to a training that teaches them exactly how that method works. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put it in the show notes and you know, people can take advantage of that. That'd be great. So yeah, I mean, because it's, it is such an in-depth in training, um, I think it'd be better to do that. I actually have a training that they can sign up for if they want. Okay. Um, but it'll go into like the real, um, in depth. I'm just looking on my notes. Um, it'll, I'll give you the link and you can just share it with your, with your show notes. 
Um, it's going to put them into a messenger. It's like the flexi list building method. It'll put them in there. Um, but then they'll get access to that training. Okay. And, um, that training will definitely, I would highly, highly recommend it. It is, it is very next level. It is very, uh, I would say like you could watch it. And if it's something that goes over your head, hire somebody to do it. Um, but it's actually, we actually, the biggest day we had, we did, uh, almost seven, it was like 1,659 subscribers in one day. Wow. Wow. From doing this method. Jeez. Uh, it was like over a thousand a day. So well, cool. Well, thanks for it, sharing that. That's awesome. I call, it, I call it booby traps on steroids. <laughs> well, it makes sense. It sounds like it is. Uh, well, that's cool that, you know, thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, I know we're getting to the end here, so I want to be very respectful of your time. So we've got just a quick kind of bonus round, something fun to kind of close this out. Uh, so let me tell you how this works. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and you want to respond with one word answers. Okay. Okay. So that's the key. One word answers. So, one word answers. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, all right. What caused your biggest, uh, e-com or business success to date? Mindset. Okay. What got you through your toughest moments as a business owner? Um, support. How would you describe yourself? Um, kind. And how does 2019 look for you? Huge. Awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Carl, for being on, man. Um, incredible stuff. Uh, audience, got, uh, whoever you, wh however you're joining us, whether you're joining us, you know, through audio or you know you're watching this, you know, you definitely need to follow what Carl is doing with uh, Segmate app. Um, is, is it SegmateApp.com? SegmateApp.com. Yeah, S E G M A T E A P P dot com. And Seg is like segmentation, uh, and Mate is like automate. So Segmate. Segmate and automate with chatbots. I'll just spell it out for everybody. Yeah. Uh, S E G M A T E A P P dot com. So there you go. But uh, yeah, go to segmate, uh, you know, dot com. You know, check out Carl's incredible software. It's one of the best on the market when it comes to, you know, using uh, chatbots effectively. And it's going to allow you to apply everything you just. Uh, heard and or watched, you know, over the course of this interview with Carl. So definitely, you know, go to segmateapp.com to be able to use his software and adopt the shark strategies and tactics that has led to so much success that he's had uh, to date. Um, Carl, hey, th thanks, man, for being on here. It's been a great interview. I really appreciate you being on here, man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you having me and uh, I definitely hope I provided great value for people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, guys, go follow, follow Carl and uh, Carl, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to e-commerce all-stars by learning from the best. You're saving yourself time, money, and pain from trying to figure it out all by yourself. You can save yourself time, wasted advertising dollars and stress from your Facebook ads right now by claiming a copy of Facebook advertising trends and strategies for e-commerce, the 2019 edition. You can generate more results than you've ever experienced with Facebook ads. You can adapt to the current trends happening right now that are affecting business owners from getting the best possible results on Facebook. And you can discover how to scale your Facebook advertising results. All of this is possible for your business by learning from 13 of the best Facebook advertising experts in the world by claiming your copy of Facebook Advertising Trends and Strategies for E-Commerce, the 2019 edition. Thanks for listening to E-Commerce All-Stars. E-Commerce All-Stars.